Hi, I'm Tom Ulius from the band Burn Kit 2600. Today I'm going to be taking you through a uh, marathon circuit bending session with the Kawasaki iSounds guitar. I picked this up at a tag sale and uh, I was in intrigued by the way it is played where you press down these little metal strings and they complete contacts along the bridge. There's six of them here. And uh, when you play those in unison with one of these buttons, you get chords. And um, it's been on my back burner to uh, modify it for a while, but I haven't had the chance, so uh, today's the day. So let's take a quick run through of the sounds that this thing can make. So this is the back of the guitar, and that's the battery pack there, three AA batteries. And there's a switch here that goes from demo mode to play mode. It must be some sort of power save thing for when it's in the stores. Up here is where the buttons are for playing the chords on the, on the neck of the guitar. And you can follow these ribbon cables back to this board here. It's where all of the... Uh, magic takes place I suppose. There's a lot of ribbon cables coming off of here because there's a lot of buttons on this thing. Uh, there's buttons over here, buttons over here. They control like the volume and uh, turning on the beats and changing the sounds and stuff like that. And here's a speaker which is underneath the I guess the pickup area where the metal strings create the contacts. I can see that there's a little tiny op amp and a black blob Underneath that black blob is probably where the sample data is and also the little computer that kind of interprets with all the little switching matrix that they've made. There's also a sing-along mic jack here on a, on a tiny little board and the on-off switch and a headphone jack so I'll be able to tap that for an output and then I guess I have an alternate input over here too so I've got a lot to play with. There was an iPod dock like in the side here in the guitar. So that means there's a, a line input going back into the circuit board here where this wire comes in. I think I'll be looking for a feedback loop that I can generate from this area here. That's where the iPod dock comes back in at a line level. It feeds into this AB amp. Using my screwdriver here with the lead going back to the battery terminal. So that's like R2 and R4 over here at uh, C8. Nice. R5 over here is the one that's responsible for a pitch. I've got the board now marked where the different points are that I can hit. That makes it louder. And I can turn on the different sounds from here using the pads or play the chords. Okay, so I'm back from lunch. I uh, took a little time to uh, formulate my plan of attack, what I'm going to do with this thing. So I um, decided I'm going to hack it up. What I, I don't really need uh, this interface. So what I'm going to do is. Uh, take the circuit board out of this. This here is an old VCR box. So what I'm going to do is take the whole guitar guts, put it in this box here, instead of having to work with this clunky pseudo string interface, I'll have some reliable buttons and RCA input jacks and I'll be able to uh, trigger them from using uh, MIDI information and um, a little extra hardware. Well, my soldering iron is heating up so I can uh, detach that ribbon cable to the string interface and while that's happening I'm going to break out the Dremel and just hack out the battery compartment so I can use it again. 
removing ribbon cable here. And now, get rid of this all together. So now I've got all of the button boards removed and I'm left with all these ribbon cables. Here's that wire that goes to ground that's, that was originally um, going to the, uh, the string section and I can just rub it across the uh, ribbon cable here and complete these little circuits. And So I have all of the boards removed save uh, this last arrangement here which has the input and output, the mic input and the headphone output and the speaker line runs through that as well as also the battery and it all comes through this one last cable that feeds the main board so I had to figure out what all these lines were doing and uh, now that I know that I'll be able to uh, interface with the main board and can finally get rid of that one last one and I can start wiring up the box